about the heroin epidemic or the opioid epidemic in the community. The city and the county have partnered. Uh, the, the county is definitely on the lead because it makes sense that we have all the systems that are strained because of the epidemic. Think about the folks going into jail. Think about the children being removed from their homes. The court system. I mean, that's our stuff. But the city is also working in this space and matching funds with us for addiction services hotline, for the, the quick response team, which now the city has a quick response team, as does the county. We've got a county-wide response team that can uh, move in a nimble way to go wherever someone has had an overdose to try to get them into treatment. So we are coordinating on one of the most important issues in this county, uh, which is the issue of addiction, never mind, you know, the fentanyl, car fentanyl, and all, all that's and going on. is the chair of the heroin. I'm the chair of the heroin coalition, coalition. But, but trying to bring in <coughs> as many partners as possible, and the city has been a willing partner sitting at that table and bringing money to the table which is critically important to help us you know really build upon the work that's going on in the, in the private sector and the nonprofit sector so the city just recently uh, set aside some money for an uh, eviction program as you may know like uh, many communities uh, the number of uh, evictions that take place each year is very very high and I know that judge Bettman has been part of the task force that council member uh, Greg Lansman has organized and we've just um, affirmed and um, uh, passed an ordinance that set aside uh, specifically $227,000 uh, to be uh, the subject of a request for proposals. We're trying to, we will partner with a local agency that uh, services families that face eviction. Uh, and, uh, the judge probably knows more than I do about the details, but the, but the idea is somebody's about to be evicted there may be a whole host of reasons why they're being affected, and a small one-time financial uh, award can uh, keep them in their housing, uh, get them past the crisis that put them there in the first place, and avoid the If you've ever, what's the name of the book about the Milwaukee? Evicted. Evicted. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's written by a journalist, and so there, for it reads like that, and it's a journalist who lived uh, amongst the uh, families that were victims of uh, evictions, and it, it just, it, you know, it, it's it's not unique in no way because every place there is a uh, a mill a mill that drives uh, uh, folks that uh, haven't uh, paid their rent through the system as quickly as possible. The other thing we're going to do at the city is provide funding to legal aid, provide some legal support because right now there's no system that provides any legal help, and you know. Uh, it's not always the case that the landlord is entitled to have an eviction. So that's one of the things uh, we're doing. Uh, and, uh, it, it obviously affects. Yeah, and it reminds me of the Save, Save the Dream program that was set up under Ted Strickland to try to provide this kind of stopgap funding for just to keep folks in there. Remember the foreclosure crisis and all that. Uh, we are trying to keep folks in their homes, and it's, it's a great idea. And one other thing I, I want to mention is we are learning from the city when it comes to inclusion efforts. Uh, the county is not great in this space. Uh, I don't know that we've tried very hard, and so we're trying. And we've got an inclusion council set up. We have a director of inclusion in place. The city has done a pretty good job of this, and so we are learning about some of the strategies to make sure that everybody in the county is part of the growth of the county. It feels included when it comes to purchasing and contracts and you know uh, work on the coroner's office. And so we are trying to implement, and the coroner's office is a good example of how we are trying to approach our uh, business differently. It's kind of a pilot almost where the, we are putting in some inclusion strategies to make sure that people in this community get the jobs in this community. Uh, and the city has been a good model of how some of this can work. Yeah, we had a uh, building on that. Yesterday uh, we approved legislation that the mayor had been working on that uh, creates a micro loan, loan fund for uh, smaller businesses. Uh, with a preference for uh, minority or female-owned businesses. And the idea, and this is a, a money from the city, the mo a money from LISC, uh, and money from Fifth Third that is still paying for some of its past sins. And, uh, <laughs> uh, bless them. And, and uh, it, it's a phenomenal opportunity uh, for folks that need a, maybe have a high-risk venture uh, that deserve some small financing, microloan or otherwise. So 
I just said that it hasn't gotten much publicity yet, but I, I was very excited to and, have the chance to vote on it. And I'm reminded, because well, remember I told you there were three impacts about the shutdown, and I only told you one. Sorry about that. Uh, for those of you that are keeping track, the SBA program, the Small Business Loan Program, is something that runs through the federal government through HCDC, which is a county entity. Um, those About three million a month is going out to small businesses to um, augment what they're doing, to invest in equipment, to retain and build jobs. Um, that money is not coming right now uh, because of the shutdown. And so all of that has been stopped. And the other one is uh, in the heroin space, uh, we have these quick response teams. I'm assuming you know what that is. It's a team that goes out to someone that received Narcan and tries to get them into treatment. Literally goes on the door with us about three or four days. We've got all the data we need to do this. And uh, the city's got this, the county's got this. Well, the officer, it's officer and treatment specialist, two treatment specialists and the officer. The officer is funded through a grant from the federal government. Guess what? That money's not coming. Uh, so we were able to fund this month, but it comes on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So the county is now in a position to front the money, either stop the program or front the money for that individual until we start receiving. And we're assuming we're going to get all the money, right? That it's not going to just go away. Uh, so how long, though, can the county on so many, three million for SBA? Never. And we can, no way we can front that money. This salary for this one individual, yes. We will do it. How long can we do this kind of stuff? And it's playing out in different places. But those are the three big ones for the shutdown. Yes, sorry, I don't totally think, you know, uh, federal <laughs> workers are taxpayers. And uh, I, I'm finding out about additional people. A, a friend of mine is a retired Coast Guard officer, was on the phone yesterday with a local active duty Coast Guard officer. And, uh, you know, he's not being paid. And he's working. Uh, he's not paying taxes. Uh, he will, of course, when he. When he's paid, so that, and, you know, I don't know what uh, the situation is at the airport with our uh, uh, security personnel, and uh, I'm sure it's slowed down. And Betsy was asking me last night, "What about Jim, who's an IRS employee? I think he's not being paid." So there, there are thousands. I, I don't. I, I've lost track of the number, but uh, I, I haven't heard of any direct impacts in terms of money not coming to the city. I'm sure there are, and they're going to get larger and larger as time goes on. Uh, well, on that topic, uh, my son works for the, has worked for the EPA for the last 30 years, and, and he is, of course, not, not getting a paycheck. His health insurance has always been deducted from his paycheck. Mm -hmm. They are not being deducted. The health insurance premiums are not being paid. <coughs> and what I heard from a Kentucky IRS Freud employee was that when they do get repaid, they will not be taking out the deductions for the lost uh, premiums, which means that the employee themselves, when they get this check, which they're going to desperately need to pay off everything they've been accumulating, is going to have to pay that health insurance themselves. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have thousands of people across the country who don't do that. They there can't because they got other problems. And they're all going to end up at the health department. Mm -hmm. And there are thousands of people in Hamilton County that are federal employees. I Absolutely. Don't think I mean, you we, yeah, need to know how many that. there are because mm -hmm. there's those kinds of impacts that are going to kick you. And never mind that we've got some air quality issues mm -hmm. in Winton Terrace. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In EPA, it contracts with the county to go do that testing to, so that we can get to the root of the problem. So that's happened so far. That's going to that's gonna end uh, in the meantime. So, But you are right, the personal how many people do you know that, you know, if, if you have six or eight health insurance payments and then you get a huge check, are you going to pay well, it? Does your insurance c coverage continue? I mean, well, is that on the for 30 to 60 days, the insurance company will let it go. <coughs> but after that, I'm, who knows? Yes. Hi. Um, I, I, have, I have a statement and then I have a question. I won't take a huge amount of time. Um, <coughs> when, when I was a lot younger, um, we, we wanted corporations, I remember that we wanted corporations to come into the city of the county because they would add to the tax base. They would bring, not just, they would have employees, um, you know, and hire people and, you know, good things would happen as a result of that, that company. And I don't know, maybe since uh, Reagan, the uh, corporations come and they get a tax abatement. Okay, and I, I see you know, this corporation's coming, this corporation, and they're getting a tax abatement. Supposedly, the other good things that they bring offset that, and that, and that obviously hasn't happened. What I've heard you saying, um, David and Denise, is that there's a revenue problem. 
and um, the revenue, the people who handle the money are the corporations, okay? We know how, how much CEOs get paid. We might not know what, what the, the individual business tax is, as you say, we don't, we're not privy to that. But um, all of these things that you're talking about, if we had more revenue from corporations, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, maybe I'm naive about this, about, uh, and I'm not talking about the political will, I mean the practical will, I'm talking about the political will. When are the corporations and how are they going to be made to pay their fair share? So that these, all these things where the revenue shortfalls are happening won't happen. Thank you. So we extend tax <laughs> abatements fairly regularly for developments, and it's, it's an abatement of the real estate tax that's payable. And the, the proposition is if you don't abate, will you or will you not have the particular development? Uh, and I think it's too simplistic to say, well, you're giving away money. We're not giving away money if it's not going to happen. So uh, we have a department that's devoted to underwriting, analyzing, and recommending uh, to counsel whether to extend the bank or not. We, we abate um, a portion of the real estate tax. We have an agreement with the, uh, the school system that's been in existence, I think, for about 20 years, mm -hmm. which guarantees as we abate that the school system will receive 25% payments in lieu of taxes. So that, that is something that a development is obliged to do. Uh, in, in OTR and the downtown business district, we've added a 15% requirement uh, for um, the streetcar to try to deal with the revenue shortfalls there. So, and the full the real, the real estate abatement that can be obtained is 60%. And last year, we we added to that 15% idea outside the Central Business District and OTR. And the norm there is that 15% must be set aside half for the projects in the neighborhood where the development is and half for a citywide affordable housing uh, program. So those two things have done to, been done to try to make those who benefit from abatements do more than just pay real estate taxes. Now, from the city's perspective, there are two things you need to uh, the bear on this. First, uh, we have capped how much money we collect from the real estate taxes at about $29 million. So we just had a, that annual discussion last week in council. Our city charter, which was approved in 1924, included a, uh, the right of council to collect 6.1 mils of, of taxes for operating purposes on, the, on uh, property within the city. For the last uh, 15 years or so, <clears throat> we haven't been collecting 6.1. We've rolled back and we're, we're keeping what we collect at, at, at approximately $29 million a year, no matter what. Now, I, I think that's a crazy thing because we have an $18 million uh, deficiency uh, shortfall and, and we're turning our back on about $5 million a year because we're rolling 6.1 back to 5 point something. That's, that's one issue. Uh, the agreement with CPS expires uh, this year and we have begun conversations and unless CPS agrees, uh, there won't be any abatements at all and uh, I'm guessing that CPS is going to say if there are going to be abatements, we want more than 25%. So that's a conversation that's going to take place. Uh, now remember, most uh, developments are justified uh, in terms of abatement because of the anticipated uh, new uh, employees in the city of Cincinnati. Therefore, we're collecting taxes. You talked about those rich executives. If they live and work in the, if they work in the city, work, no matter where they live, they pay 2.1 percent, just like everybody else. Uh, secondly, uh, we anticipate Thank you. You know, we're going to increase the tax base. And when the tax abatement goes out, off after 12 years or 15 years, we have the benefit going forward. So these are good things. The other thing from the city standpoint, which maybe is a little selfish, uh, the real estate taxes, uh, we, we collect only about 10% of the real estate taxes. The rest of them go to the county, the schools, uh, mental health levy, uh, children's services levy, 
uh, hospital levy, there's a, there's a whole list of the, uh, 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 the, the zoo, uh, well, actually, yeah. county, countywide uh, park district, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, so as we abate, uh, this is a two-edged sword, we're not giving away our money. Uh, so it's, it's easy, maybe it's too easy for us to 